Russia's losses in the war against Ukraine are three times higher than Ukraine's. Russia's losses in the war against Ukraine are three times higher than Ukraine's. This was stated in an interview for The Guardian by the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Alexander Sirsky. He said that the Kremlin's losses are three times greater than Ukraine's losses and in some areas even more. Their numbers of dead is much greater, he emphasized. In February, President Volodymyr Zelensky said 31,000 Ukrainian servicemen had died since 2022. However, Sirsky declined to comment on the figure. He stressed that the losses were a sensitive topic that could be exploited by Moscow. Ukrainian armed forces officer and volunteer Myroslava Gai believes that the number of dead Ukrainian soldiers at 31,000 is adequate, but there are also missing persons, among whom heroes can also be paid. In July 2024, President Volodymyr Zelensky again stated that he knows how many people the Ukrainian armed forces lose every day. If we have one killed for six to eight wounded, then they have every second or third. A full-scale war in Ukraine has been going on for more than two and a half years. During this time, the Russian army which launched the aggression has lost a large number of personnel and military equipment. According to estimates by The Economist, the losses in equipment of Putin's troops may amount to about 3,000 tanks and 5,000 other armored vehicles. The dynamics of the large-scale elimination of Russian hardware in the field is still at a high level. According to journalists, Russia has decommissioned Soviet weapons for the war against Ukraine, but about 70% of the old tanks have remained stationary, while the rest have been washed and passed off as new. In addition, the Russians are removing artillery barrels from old equipment and installing them on self-propelled howitzers. If this continues, Russia will reach a critical point of depletion in 2025. According to the newspaper, this is also evidenced by the fact that the counter-offensive launched by Russia in early May this year is gradually fading away, and the successes that Russia has had have come at too high a price. At the same time, much depends not so much on whether Ukraine will be able to continue the fight as on how long Russia will be able to maintain its current pace of operations. Russia can add 25,000 soldiers to its army every month, thus keeping the number of troops on the front at 470,000. Riga has prepared a batch of more than 500 drones to be sent to Ukraine, Latvian Defense Minister Andris Sprud said. Earlier this month, Riga announced it would send more than 2,500 combat drones of different types to Ukraine in July, worth 4 million euros or $4.3 million. Sprud shared photos on X showing a number of packed boxes that read, Drone Coalition. When the drones are expected in Ukraine wasn't mentioned by Sprud's. As a member of the Drone Coalition, Latvia is constantly working on sending drones to Ukraine in accordance with the needs of the army and investing heavily in their production. The Drone Coalition was launched on February 17, 2024 within the framework of the Contact Group on Defense of Ukraine. Latvia and Great Britain acted as co-leaders of the initiative. Sweden, Denmark, Germany, Lithuania, Estonia, Canada and the Netherlands have also joined the coalition, a total of 14 countries are already in the coalition. Now more than 500 million euros has been collected for the supply of drones to Ukraine. Latvia and the UK are the leaders of the international coalition established to supply Ukraine with drones, which became a crucial capability on Ukrainian battlefields. Earlier, Latvian President Edgars Rinkiewicz called on NATO partners to lift restrictions on the use of Western weapons supplied to Ukraine against Russian military facilities. In April, it became known that Ukraine and Latvia planned to start joint production of unmanned aerial vehicles for the needs of the armed forces of Ukraine.